Well, hello, Internet. Sorry, it's been a while since my last post, and you can guarantee that if I do not post for a couple days, that means that I'm either dead, which I'm not, obviously, or I'm working on a big project. And here is the beginning of it. I'm going to completely teach you every single thing there is to know about JavaScript. First off, what is JavaScript? Well, we already know, if you've seen my other tutorials, HTML specializes in structuring the website. CSS, or Cascading Style Sheets, styles the text and handles the layout of the website. Well, what JavaScript does is it's a scripting language that allows you to make your site more interactive. Now, going back to the fact that HTML provides structure by surrounding all of the content on your web page with tags, if you don't know what this means, that means you haven't seen my HTML tutorial. JavaScript can manipulate HTML tags through the use of event handlers, we'll cover that in a bit, validate form information, change CSS styling, and store information on the visitor's computer. Here's a brief explanation of event handlers. An event handler is an alarm that alerts JavaScript code to do something if the alarm has been triggered by the, some action the visitor has performed. Now, some of these actions could be just simply loading your page. Event handlers can notify JavaScript code also if the mouse pointer touches any tag and event handlers can notify code if a person would click on anything, obviously, along with a whole host of other things. So where do you write your JavaScript code? Well, there's actually two ways, just like cascading style sheets. You can either embed directly into the HTML, and you would do that by using the script tag followed by type, quote, text, forward slash JavaScript, and then type out all your code and end out with a closing script tag. Or you can link to an external JavaScript file, and you would do that by just simply typing script, language, followed by the actual location of that JavaScript code. And if you wanted to hide your script from browsers that don't recognize JavaScript code or have JavaScript unenabled, you would simply embed it by using the same exact opening phrase, then followed by the HTML comment that we see right here before we have hide JavaScript. Then you would have your JavaScript code, and then you would follow that up with a fourth line down, followed by the script closing tag. Here's some JavaScript basics. What are functions? Functions are groupings of statements that you can type once and then use over and over again. We'll get more into that. What are loops? Use looping statements to perform a repetitive action over and over until some condition is met. Here's an example. Add one to this number over and over again until it is equal to 10,000. Then we have conditionals. Conditionals provide you with the ability to do one thing if something is true and do another thing if it is false. For example, if your friend buys you a gift on your birthday, you would thank him. If your friend did not, you would punch him. There's a conditional. Variables are simply locations that you define you want to store information in. For example, you store your receipts and checks in a box named taxes so that you know where to find them come tax day. Think of a variable as a labeled box you store stuff in. Now we're moving on to functions and operators. JavaScript includes many functions that will perform common actions for you. It has all of the common operators such as addition, subtraction, multiplication, equals, and division, and modulus, and a whole bunch of other things. What are comments and how do you use them in JavaScript? JavaScript provides you with the ability to leave notes or comments inside of your code. Here you would describe what the code is doing. You can define that something is a comment by starting the line with the two forward slashes, and then everything that follows till the end of the line will be ignored. Or you could comment out multiple lines by typing forward slash star, then have your comment, and end it with star forward slash. Those are the two ways to comment. Here is a basic layout for a function. Start off with the, the function name, then whatever you want to name your function, and it's considered good form, to start off with a lowercase letter and then have each additional word in your function name be capitalized. Then you would have the arguments that you would like to pass to your function, followed by an opening curly brace, all of your JavaScript code. Then you would use the return keyword to send a value back to the code that requested that the function perform certain actions. And then finally, you would close off the function with a closing curly brace. Here's a real function. What this function does, named add these, is simply adds two numbers, assigns them to the variable I de defined here named total, and then returns total. And you can see down below here on the third bulleted item, 
You would call this by simply typing in the name of the function, followed by two arguments that you supply to it. And then it would return that value and assign it to addition in this case. Or you could also embed the function like we did here. Not only did we send two arguments to the function add these, we also added two to the result of that. For loops. A for loop continues performing actions until a condition is met, quite simply. This is the basic structure of a for loop. First, you have the keyword for, followed by your initial expression, which will be a value that you are going to perform operations on. Then, you have to define how long this loop will continue until a certain condition is met. And then finally, you have the point in which you would actually edit your expression. You can see here I defined a variable named i, gave it the value of 1. And then I said I'm going to continue looping as long as i remains smaller than 100. Then you can see the shorthand version of increment for the variable i. All this does, is these two addition symbols, is continually adds one each time it loops through. Then I use the document write line function to output that value to the screen. We also have while loops. A while loop can also be used for looping. Its basic structure is the keyword while followed by a condition. Then you have your code. And then finally, you have your iterator. Here's a real example. We're going to continue to loop through this while loop until i is either equal to or greater than 100. And you can see, just like in the previous for loop, I'm performing the same act, which is to repetitively write the value of i to the screen. You can see the iterator down there as well. The do while loop doesn't check if the condition has been met before executing the code. That is what differs it from the for as well as the while. What it does is it actually goes through, performs all the actions you define in your code, and then at the end checks to make sure the variable is less than 100. Real example of a do while loop. First off, it's gonna output the value of i to the screen, then it's going to add one to that value, and then it's gonna to check to make sure that i is indeed less than one. Your variables, variables are locations that you define you wanna store information. You use the keyword var to tell the browser you wanna create a new place to store information. Here's an example where I created a variable named my email, and then assigned to it the string, which is my email address. It's considered good form to start the name with a lowercase letter and then capitalize each word thereafter. And here is an example of that being done. Variables created inside of your functions are only accessible inside of the function in which they are declared. Remember that. If you want to be able to, to access a variable anywhere, make sure that you declare it outside of all of your other functions. You should also never create two variables with the same name. JavaScript is loosely typed. What this means is most languages require you to tell them what types of information you will assign to a variable. JavaScript doesn't care, except for a few instances. You can assign a number to a variable name and then assign a text value to, to that same variable name and not throw an error. For example, you could store the following all in the same exact JavaScript variable. The number 1000, which in most languages would be considered an integer, and you have an exponent with a thousand zero be considered either a float or a double and then you have actual text. All of those things can be stored in one Java variable. Here are some examples. What we're doing here is creating a variable named number one and giving it the value five. Then we are taking another variable and assigning it the string 10. You can see here, whenever we add these two variables together, even though one is a number and the other is a string, JavaScript goes even further and outputs the value as 15, it automatically converts and we have different functions and operators in JavaScript. You have obviously the addition, the subtraction, the multiplication, the division. Then you have the odd modulus, which is used to return the remainder of a division of two numbers. Then you have increment, which is a shorthand way to add one to a value. Decrement, which is actually two negative signs together. It's shorthand for subtracting one from a value. Also, there are operators you use for in your looping. Here, we're checking to see if x is equal to y, x is less than y, x is greater than y, and so forth and so forth. And that is basically it. In the upcoming tutorials, I'm going to teach you everything about JavaScript, just as I have in all my other tutorials, by showing you real JavaScript code and explaining how it works. And yes, indeed, everything will be covered. Till next time.